Morning Warriors, <clears throat> Warrior Man here. Getting ready to get started in my studio and I want to do do that video that I promised. I got a lot I want to say so I just want to jump right in and the first thing I want to say is you know the position I find myself in right now is really interesting to me. It's not one that I really sought out and it's not one that I imagined 20 years ago that I'd be in today. I mean, somebody had showed me a crystal ball and they pointed to it and said, you know, warrior, 20 years from now, you're going to be the only adult in the room. I probably would have rejected the idea. And I wouldn't have rejected the idea because I, didn't, I wasn't an adult at the time and I didn't think that in the future I was still going to be an adult. Of course, a much different one and um, uh, maybe a better one, maybe not. I'll leave that to other people to decide. But I just thought that all the guys I was in the room with at the time, everybody that I worked with, all the guys that were a part of my life, whether I liked them, or disliked them, admired them, or didn't admire them, I just figured that down the road, we would all be adults in the room. And I just don't see that going on. And let me explain what I mean. What I mean is, is that we'd be better grown-ups, that we'd be more capable men that we'd be more mature, that we'd be wiser about the ways of life, that we wouldn't be making the same silly, stupid, and immature decisions and choices and remarks and comments. And uh, Terry's not the only one that's doing it. If you've been coming around for a while to my website, my blog, you know that this has been of interest to me for a long, long time, growing up and acting like a grown-up and stepping up to the next level of responsibility and maturity in your life. It's important for men to do. So I think that's the most important thing I want to come out of what I have to say here today on this video. You know, until last week, it never crossed my mind that I wanted to spend the time or make the effort to say what I'm going to say here today. And the main reason is, although I knew Terry had really messed up his life and uh, was continuing to mess it up in a really bad way, I have been delightfully that's the great that's a great word to use I've been delightfully caught up in the beauty and wonder of my own life and I built that life up without having to depend on paying attention to wrestling without having to involve myself in wrestling without paying attention to what's going on in the lives of the talent and especially what's going on in the messed up life of, of Terry Belay I mean I really just didn't care I didn't give a rat's ass how far down the hole his life was going or what it meant to other people uh, his behavior in the last few years but then Randy died he had his accident and he passed away and I read some things I saw some things I heard some things I did a lot of thinking like I talked about in the tribute video that I did for him and I realized that I just I couldn't keep my mouth shut any longer about this, about some things that I've been seeing, that I needed to speak up, I just couldn't stay silent. And if not so much for me, because I've made my life work outside the sick and selfish world that Terry Bollea still operates his in. But for, I needed to speak out for all the other voices that can't be heard like mine. The millions of fans from around the world that uh, enjoyed the WWF at the time and were fans of all the characters. And <clears throat> that's really one part of the problem that Terry has. He never had room in his heart or mind to believe that people were fans of the other characters, other than Hulk Hogan. So, <clears throat> I wanted to say something for all these people that can't be heard. I mean, the truth is, I've been blessed to really learn some great things about life because I had my success in sports entertainment. It has nothing to do with having money and being able to buy stuff. Um, my experiences there caused me to want to pay greater attention, deeper attention to what was going on in my life and what I was all about. I would not have been able to learn those things if it wasn't for the people who got behind me in my sports entertainment career. So I'm proud to lend my voice to these people who also have thoughts and feelings and ideas right now about things that are going on or that they've seen for a few years and most especially in the last couple of weeks. You know, Terry, the biggest mistake that you've made 
all these years that you've worked to mischaracterize me and paint this picture of me being a horrible human being, the biggest mistake that you made was, was that you worked yourself into believing that I was not even there at that time and place where our lives cross paths. I mean, when you talk about warrior, ultimate warrior, you talk about me like my presence and participation never even existed. It's incredible how you and others do. It's like you think if you don't mention it or you belittle it in, in a really violent way that history will be changed, that the memory of it will just disappear forever. And that's just ridiculous. I know you. And you know I know you. You know that I know the real you. You know that I know that when you think about the wrestling world, in your mind, there was only room for Terry Bollea and nobody else. You know that I know what kind of malicious and backstabbing operator you are. And you know that when I have something to say about you, it is not a guess. Others know it too. They know that I don't bullshit. They know that I never have. On the other hand, you have a long running reputation for being a liar and a fraud and a phony. I do own a piece of your psyche. And if I do, then all the Ultimate Warrior fans do too. And the proof of that is your actions over the years. I mean, all the mocking and ridiculing and the beating up on the, and the devaluing of Ultimate Warrior's time in the business, that it was worthless, it was just a flash in the pan. All that that you do, all the years I've been away from the business to make it even less valuable. And you guys still, every chance you get, you reference something, Warrior, Ultimate Warrior, Ultimate something, to tease the wrestling audience or pique their curiosity. And it goes all the way back to Renegade, which you denied for years until a book publisher walked in the room and started throwing a, a few hundred dollars around for people to do tell-all books, and the truth came out then. The Triton character that you tried to get away with, I sent the season to assist, where you showed the shadowy imagery on the inside of the arena walls. The guy coincidentally happened to be the guy who played me in Steve Sting's movie. I remember talking to Bischoff in 1998 when I was <clears throat> going to come in, and he's all excited one day, jumping up and down on the phone like a kid with ants in his pants. And he's saying, yeah, Terry's out shooting a movie right now. It's titled The Ultimate Something, and he's got hair just like yours. <laughs> you know, Terry, you get such a, a sick pleasure out of... Um, you know, exposing other people's dirty laundry, taking cheap shots at them. So I want to do some of that. I think when I said I was going to do this video that people thought, <clears throat> Warriors got some dirty laundry on Terry Balea. And I do. I have different dirty laundry than everybody else. A lot of it I don't want to mention because it's going to be great material in my book. And I don't want to mention a lot of details of the things I'm going to mention here now. But just to have a little fun, let's do some dirty laundry. Dirty laundry like that. Terry, you truly are a dopehead. I mean, you have been into getting high and doing dope for years. What was it you used to say? A day without smoking pot is like a day without sunshine. That was a catchphrase of yours that you said all the time. A day without smoking pot, brother, is like a day without sunshine. Dirty laundry like that, <clears throat> there are days, Terry, where you do do nothing but sit around and snort cocaine. Now, your lifestyle may have changed in the recent years, but, I mean, your behavior doesn't really reflect that. You may have changed your lifestyle up somewhat, but 
you had plenty of those days where you just sit around and snorted cocaine. To take the kind of vitamins that you take, Terry, you know the ones that are part of your gimmick, say your prayers, take your vitamins, train. To take the kind of vitamins you train, you, you, you take the kind of vitamins that you take, Terry, you need to have a prescription. That gimmick bag you wear around your waist that you're never without, that's where you carry all your gimmicks so you can stay high all day. Keep a buzz on all day. Of course, anybody that gets in that, into that thing now, now that I said that, they won't find anything. You'll find another place to stash your stuff. Juvie juice. Rejuvenation juice. You, you call it juvie juice. It was rejuvenation juice. It um, amps up your dopamine levels. You get incredibly high off of it. But you can also get so high that you kill yourself. I mean, didn't a few guys, few of the guys that you turned that stuff on over there at WCW back in the day, didn't they OD on that stuff? Kevin Sullivan was one of those guys. I mean, you used to carry that stuff around in a half gallon bottle. I mean, like you drank it like kids drink Kool-Aid. You were never without it. You still do that? You still carry that around, Terry? Dirty laundry like that you and Linda had an open marriage. You were both whores that did slutty stuff on the side. Neither one of you had a problem with the other one getting thrills on the side. In fact, Terry, you tried to get me to sample those thrills. You remember that, Terry? You know, being the only wrestler that said no to so many things in wrestling. I bet I'm the only guy that ever said no to doing your wife. Dirty laundry, Terry, like that you were so paranoid and fearful of other guys getting over, but you hated confrontation. You always used to say, I hold my enemies close, brother. You were so fearful of confrontation that you assisted other guys in keeping them junkies just so you could have control over them. You're not a good or decent human being, Terry. Not at all. What about the silly stuff, man, that everybody laughs and giggles about? But, you know, I don't see anybody even talking about it or raising it. I mean, what about the laughing and giggling here? The do-rag. I mean, you're still wearing the do-rag, man. You're almost 60 years old, still doing the gimmick, wearing the 50-cent sunglasses you buy down on Venice Beach by the dozen. I mean, I can only imagine how many extra millions it cost you in your divorce settlement when you walked into the divorce proceedings looking the fool that you did. I mean, were you not aware of what kind of idiot you look like? I mean, Linda's lawyer must have been pissing down his leg. And the judge, too. The court reporter, everybody involved in the thing, the press. I mean, was it worth it to, to feed your ego, the gimmick's ego? To continue to dress like a clown and not have any, um, any decorum whatsoever for professional settings? To walk in and just start doing the gimmick? Your flap of extensions, you know, back there that you got going on. I mean, it's not your hair. Those are extensions, man. <laughs> you know, I see a guy with a comb over. Not so when I see overweight people. You know, really overweight people. I say, man, there's some serious character flaws going on there. Serious lack of character happening there. A guy with a flap of extensions? I mean, I don't even know where to start. 
I don't know where to start. I mean, a whole cartoon series could be made out of that. I, used, I joke with people. I said, I used to joke with people this way. I said, you know, if you lift that flap of extension on the back of Terry's neck, you would find the Wizard of Oz. And I realized that I was wrong, or only partially right. You wouldn't find the Wizard of Oz, but you would find the Scarecrow, the Tin Man, and the Lion. Because you don't have a brain. You don't have a heart. And you have absolutely no fucking courage. All this stuff you got on, uh, got going on about the positive living, positive ways stuff. You recently wrote after I did my short video saying that karma was coming to collect you said um, Hulkamania and negativity two things that don't go together Terry Hulkamania and negativity go together like peanut butter and jelly I mean there's, there's no better combo Everything you say and do is negative. Everything you involve yourself in turns out to be shit. It just falls apart. There's nothing positive that comes out of any of it. I mean, how does it work that out this side of your mouth, you only have time and energy for all those things that are positive, Positive ways, positive ideas, positive interaction, <clears throat> positive engagement, positive places, positive this, positive that. But out the other side of your mouth, whenever it fits your mood or suits your purpose to rip somebody apart, or <clears throat> use, mostly you use it to excuse yourself from your own responsibility in some failed venture you're caught up in, or just to pick on somebody. All that comes out this side of your mouth is negativity. People who still use their minds, they want to know how that works. Because it's uh, talking out both sides of your mouth, it's hypocrisy to the max. I mean, it's unbelievable. The hypocrisy is unbelievable. But what's even more unbelievable is your denial of it. That you're not, it's like you're not even aware of it. Like if you won't acknowledge that you're aware of it, it will, everybody's judgment of it, seeing it for what it really is, will just go away. Life doesn't work that way for people, Terry. Man, you're a real piece of work. I want to address that comment you made. I want to wrap this thing up. I want to address that comment you made in the interview where you said Hulkamania is entwined in society. I mean, I can't believe that everybody in the room did, did burst out laughing. It's another one of those examples of how you come up with these on-the-fly remarks and you think they're loaded with intelligence. But all they do is tell the story of how freaking stupid you truly are. Hulkamania. Terry is entwined throughout society, but not in the positive, cherished way that you think it is. You and men like you Arnold Schwarzenegger, Tiger Woods, Mel Gibson, all these guys recently, other athletes like you, other celebrities like you, other men who have no celebrity at all. You are all enablers of the screwed up state of our society now. All the dysfunction that's going on in our society now, you're an enabler of it. You are one of the leading contributors, Terry, with your Hulkamania to the screwed up state of our, of our culture and all the degenerate, just idiotic, perverse behavior that's going on. Your own messed up life and the pitiful adult example that you set 
give young people ideas and excuses that they can live undisciplined and unprincipled lives without any shame, guilt, or remorse, just like you do. Life for most people, Terry, isn't a work. They can't afford the serious damages that come along with making stupid choices. You're a wealthy man, you can. You can behave immaturely and irresponsibly, and whatever price has to be paid, you can afford to pay it. When you lose one multi-million dollar house, you just move to another multi-billion dollar house. For as long as you can, anyway. Other people can't do that. Hulkamania is entwined in society by the example you've set of how to fuck up a life. You know, most people would have some shame. Most people would say, you know, I got to get my act together and I got to be more accountable for these screwed up choices and decisions I've been making. Most people would man up, Terry. I mean, Randy had it right. What was the title of his album or that song he dedicated to you, Be a Man? I mean, you've tried everything else. Why don't you try for once being a man? Try that suit on, Terry, and see if it works for you. You're lying. Man, you are just some kind of incredible liar. You're wicked. You're a wicked liar. Your whole life has been a work, lie after lie after lie. I mean, <clears throat> what is real doesn't mean anything to you. The, the fantasy world filled with lies that you operate in is more make-believe than the fairy world my tiny little daughters believe in. Your lying is wicked. In this recent lying that you've done, makes you despicable. I mean, you're a real piece of shit, Terry. Let's get real, man. You didn't reconnect with Randy. You only said that to make yourself look good. You made that story up, you made that lie up so you could make yourself look good and get the media's attention that you reconnected with Randy. I mean, by your own account, man. You just recently reconnected with a friend you hadn't spoken to in 10 years. 10 years there was silence between you and Randy. And you go on that sit-down interview show and you throw Randy under the bus in the hateful, vile way that you did? What's wrong with you, man? What kind of human being are you? I mean, the things that have real value mean nothing to you and your life. I mean, to alleviate the heat, some of the heat from that, you're gonna say, well, Randy hadn't had his accident when I sat down to do the interview. That makes you even more of a scumbag. I mean, you hadn't talked to your friend in 10 years. You put on this face like you're glad to reconnect. You're glad you got your friend back in your life. And then you go on then or you sit down and you make a conscious decision to trash his personal life in the way that you did. I mean, by your own words, it's some events that have happened since Randy's passing. <clears throat> The words that you used and the stories you told, they proved that you didn't reconnect with Randy. You crossed paths with him about a year ago in a hospital and had a few words with him. He invited you to a barbecue, maybe a step toward reconnecting, but you bashed him and mocked him in another one of those Hulk and friend, silly ass Hulk and friend tour things that you did. You mocked and ridiculed him for inviting you to a barbecue. It was below you to go to a barbecue. You know what happened? Randy was at the hospital, probably doing charity work. She did a lot of charity work. 
you know, you bash him in that sit-down interview that he's a hermit, that he stayed out of the public eye. You know that he took care of his dad for the last three or four years of his life, man? Randy was probably at the hospital doing charity work, heard that you were there. Instead of being a coward and running the opposite direction like you would have done, he stepped in the room and he said hello like a man. And you sit on that show and you laugh and giggle and you, you make jokes about him and Elizabeth's marriage falling apart. You know, let me be clear. Randy was a man. He got over his marriage or the marriage that he had with Elizabeth and that it fell apart. He moved on. That's the kind of person and man he was. When he decided to give his life to another person in his life be married to them. He was all there. His whole heart was there. There's no question about that. And a lot of people are talking about Randy being married to Elizabeth, that he's going to meet Elizabeth. Yeah, that's, you know, that's like background noise that people are going to make because of what they remember from those times. But Randy's entire soul, mind, and heart was into the woman that he had chosen to be his wife now, not then, and Elizabeth. But you make fun of the whole thing. I was there, Terry, I know. You and Linda contributed to the fallout of their marriage. Randy was on the road, touring around with me, night after night. You were shooting some movie in Florida or something like that, and you, you and Linda got an Elizabeth's ear that she needed to get out more, go do things on her own. You kept pressuring her, and it finally happened. And that was the beginning of the end. I mean, if Randy and Elizabeth, or Elizabeth had problems with Randy, and that he was too possessive or whatever, then, who were you? Who were you and Linda to think you were the capable counselors of setting everything afire? If they had problems in their marriage, let them arise on their own. There was no reason for you to stick their nose in their business. You did it because it's all part of the work. I can, I have stories about how people receive things that's how the game works. And that's how it works with Vince, too. And whether you taught him or he taught you, man, part of this strategy back then was to make sure that the personal lives of talent were in constant chaos. Constant chaos and keep them on the road. I mean, you sit there and you smirk that Randy was protective of his wife in the wrestling business backstage. I mean, the backstage environment is like a zoo. Hallways are set up as dressing rooms. You see guys um, half undressed, totally undressed, going to the shower in a towel or still in their underwear or their trunks. And Randy was being a stand-up husband, husband, and you think that's something to make fun of? His wife, I mean, Elizabeth was one of, one of the only women at the time that was in, the, in the, uh, the backstage area. And i got to tell you, man, I've never met a group of males with greater tendency toward adultery, promiscuity, and even sexual perversion. But you think it's all funny? That Randy behaved the way that he did, that he was protective of the wife that he loved? Well, of course you would. I mean, you didn't care if your wife slept with other guys. I guess by your standard, you'd think that Elizabeth ended up better off, right? I mean, by the end, she was, you know, throwing back shots of whiskey and popping pills for breakfast, sitting across from Luger, who's eating his own bowl of steroids and other gimmicks. That was a better life. I mean, she's a literal skeleton in the ground now, but that's all the better for you because that's one less skeleton to come out of your closet. Right, Terry? You ended up sleeping with one of your daughter's friends. Your wife, I guess, you know, that that was one of those thrills on the side that Linda just couldn't handle. <laughs> Your wife 
she ends up betting the 17 year old classmate of your daughter guy went to school with your daughter who weirdly looks like a young version of you and you end up marrying a girl who either looks like Linda when she was young or looks like Brooke now I mean you've confessed a lot of things in the last few years but you're not you know you're not confessing anything on that it's <clears throat> It's just all too much. And the thing is, the, all this silliness, what it really does is point to how serious you have, seriously, you have some mental issues, man. I mean, you're just not right in the head. You can't handle reality. And you are a pathological liar. I mean, for the last 10 years, you have destroyed your life. There's nothing positive about it. And you have destroyed the lives of those you claim to love and care about the most. I mean, let's look at your kids, man. I mean, they're of legal age right now, right? You spent all these years making up lies about me. I guess it's okay if I point out some of the truths about them. Your daughter, Brooke. She had incredible talent, man. She really did. But you ruined it for her. I mean, you tried to play favorites with your entertainment buddies and friends. Most of them are just thugs. You tried to buy other favors on the side so you could just gift wrap success and just hand it to her with a bow wrapped around it. Instead of doing the right thing as a parent and teaching her the value of hard work, sacrifice, self-discipline, patience, you know that thing that we, everybody knows is paying dues? I mean, you taught her the most important thing was what image she could create superficially, not what talent she could perform seriously. I mean, she did that silly-ass reality show of her own, and she's just out there floundering around now. She didn't think for herself when she was on it. She let other people think for her. They plugged her into all these just idiotic, degenerate plots. And her 15 minutes of fame, is, is, it's done, over, out, gone. What about Nick? I mean, Nick's not even floundering, man. That cat is totally lost. Totally lost. I mean, he has drifted all the way over the edge. You recently made a comment that you didn't realize that Nick was such a good DJ. I guess you finally got around, got away from your Twitter page and stuff, and your social networking, and got out to see him do his thing. He's doing the DJing thing now. I didn't realize Nick was such a good DJ. <laughs> uh, I mean, what the hell is surprising about that, Terry? I mean, you didn't realize that he was your son. I mean, and that you were his father and you were responsible for raising him in the right way so that he could go out into society and be a productive human being. And we're supposed to be surprised that you didn't know he was a decent DJ? There's nothing more disgraceful than a parent who fails their children. nothing I don't know how men do it I don't know how when they get ready to make fucked up choices and decisions that they don't put a picture of their children in their mind to stop them I mean it'd be one thing if we felt like Nick's conscience was weighed down by the burden that he had the accident and that he put his friend in a vegetative state for life a coma for life but it's hard to have sympathy for the spoiled brat when we know that he has the same black heart and the same evil mind as you do. 
That's the way you raised him. When the audio tapes of those phone calls came out, that's you. That's you, Terry. That's how you operate. And that's how you raised him. It's not about your friends. It's not about having friends. It's about fuck others. It's about get whatever you can for yourself, no, how, no matter how bad or underhanded you have to behave. I mean, you guys together, <laughs> this John kid is laid up for the rest of his life, a piece of his skull missing, and you guys lay it all on him that he had bad karma. Man, that's strong. That's strong. You know what else is strong, Terry? Your bad karma. You and your family's bad karma. It's bad. Real bad. Nasty. Nasty. Set deep in some hellish place that people can't even imagine. That's the kind of karma you have. Mr. Positivity. The sit-down interview you just did. I mean, you sit down and do the interview, they put all the material on the can, they shoot all the footage. Whoever was charged with producing that show made an executive decision that out of all the stuff that you said, and I'm sure you said more than what was put on film and what people saw on TV. They cut a bunch of stuff out. They had to because that's just the way it works. Somebody made an executive decision to use the 20-second clip where you say Ultimate Warrior was given a bullet to kill Hulkamania. I mean, people that do these things just don't throw darts or shit at the wall. They make those kind of decisions for a reason because they mean something. And they were trying to draw viewers into watching the program. When you say Warrior Who, that's a lie. You know exactly Warrior Who, Terry. You know exactly Warrior Who. I mean, when you were on that show, you could see in your body language and in your face that you knew your lies weren't coming off. In that one moment where you're talking about, I can't remember what his finish was, and the lies you made up about me wanting to go home after five minutes. <laughs> doesn't work Terry it just doesn't work and you know it comes off of you that you know it doesn't work but you still run with it another mistake that you make Terry when you say something about me or think about what you're gonna say about me you think that you're still talking to the 30 year old kid from 20 21 22 years ago Instead of the 52-year-old man, 52 in a couple weeks, 52-year-old man I am today with a totally different head on my shoulders than I had back then. And the reason why you so easily do that and weirdly get away with it inside your own mind is because you operate your life with the same head you had on your shoulders back then when I was 30. What were you, 35, 36, 37? I mean, you haven't grown up at all. Everything about you is still the gimmick. You know, they say that, um, you know, when you reach the twilight years of your life that you become a child again. I mean, <clears throat> you just stayed a child. You didn't, you're not, you haven't ever gone through or stepped up to that grown-up phase. I mean, you've been a child just continue to behave and think and act and conduct your life like a child. And that is the most embarrassing thing, the most disheartening thing, the most disappointing thing, the most shameful thing about all of this is that you haven't grown up to act your age 
to reflect the kind of incredible life experiences that you've had. I know what kind of liar you are. I know what kind of lying you're capable of. Three or four months ago, you made some comments talking about the lawsuit I had against Vince for my DVD. You said that I'd reached out to you to see if you would help me in that because we deposed you in that. That was a lie, Terry. I didn't reach out to you. I tracked down where you were and how I could find you through Linda. The server of the deposition pulled up to that property you had there in Bel Air. Linda was out in the yard doing something and she was more than happy to tell us where you were. But in that deposition, you sat there under oath when you got questioned about the things you said on that DVD relative to the 1991 event where you and Sergeant Slaughter and Vince were all <clears throat> figuring out what to do because I supposedly held Vince up for money, wouldn't go out to the ring, You're gonna take me in the broom closet, straighten me out the old way. Sitting in a deposition under oath, watching a video replay of the exact things you said, you said you had no idea about what happened, that you couldn't remember anything. I mean, isn't that odd, Terry, that you couldn't remember anything? And what was it, 2008, 2009, four years after the DVD came out? But in 2005, when you sat down to shoot the DVD, you remembered everything from 14 years back, back to 1991. I mean, you wouldn't even admit to the fact that you were sitting in your own house at the time to do the stuff you did on the DVD. You're sitting there looking at yourself, sitting in a room in your house, I think it was your library. All the furnishings and everything, You've been living around those for years. You wouldn't even admit that that was your house. I never called you to help me, Terry, but you helped me. Thanks, brother. You know, your bullet reference in that sit-down interview is really interesting. First, and especially so, because you weren't very good at making effective a use of one either. Were you, Terry? I mean, let's get real, man. You made that story up in your book that you were sitting on the bed with a gun in your mouth. I mean, just to play the victim, just to get sympathy, just to keep up the work. Never off. That's your MO. Your whole freaking life. Never off the work. I mean, everybody who knows you knows that you don't have the courage to stick a gun in your mouth, let alone put a bullet in your head. There's nothing honorable, even if the story was true. There's nothing to respect about a man who sits and lets the world know all his whines and complaints and bitches. Real men don't do that, Terry Balea. And I guess the other thing to come out of that bullet reference is, is that if I had been smart enough, or shrewd enough, or dumb enough, or backstabbing enough, calculated enough to use that bullet effectively to kill Hulkamania, then I'd be in your shoes right now, right? I'd be where you are. I'd have the great life that you have. Man, that's something to admire. Oh, that's something to shoot for, man. There, there's a goal to shoot for become like you just a pitiful absolute wreck of a man let me tell you something Terry Balea in every single measurable way the quality of my life is better than yours every single measurable way I mean you are a man who would sell what tiny bit of your soul you have left, you would sell it for a 
and for pocket change. And it's the same thing that you were trying to get across to that uh, Edge character, right? Basically, when you bashed him for retiring, while he still had all his senses, you said that he wasn't worthy enough of be being called one of the boys. I mean, that's what you were trying to say, right? That's what was between the lines of your little Twitter tweet. That he wasn't like the real boys. That he wasn't willing to stay in the business until he was mentally and physically battered like you. Just a wreck and a whore in every single way. The saddest part about it all, Terry, is that nobody wanted you to end up with the screwed up life that you now have. I don't remember anybody ever saying that that's what they thought in their mind or heart for you, that you would end up with a screwed up life. I never thought that. Everybody was okay with you being the leader. Everybody was okay that you got the biggest piece of the success pie, that you got the greatest experiences of anybody else. You were the white tiger. People admired you. But what we all expected was, was that down the road, that you would be a better grown-up, a better mature man, a wiser man. You know, few people get the opportunities that it takes to truly become wise. Most people are so busy dealing with the trivial challenges in their life, paying the bills, keeping control of the kids, keeping the house clean, buying groceries, that they don't get the opportunities to sit back and say, what's it all mean? What's my life mean in this world? And what's my life as a human being mean among all the six billion other human beings? You know, get a little introspective, get a little philosophical about what it is. You know, try to capture some wisdom in your life. You had all the opportunities, Terry. You had more opportunities than anybody else, but you pissed all over the learning that could have been done. You know, I always imagined over the years that somebody, whether it be a young guy with great raw talent, someone who you've snuffed out so they couldn't have any chance of success on their own, or one of the veterans in the business, somebody that's been in it for 20, 25 years, somebody you worked with and even stabbed in the back yourself. I always hoped that somebody would stand up, just stand the fuck up, and set the record straight. And tell the truth about what you've truly done to the business. How much negativity you've spread in the business. And what kind of person you truly are. I would have been inspired by that. I love to be inspired. But nobody did. And that's why I felt like I needed to say the things that are on my mind and on the minds of millions of people whose voices will never be heard. There's a huge audience of people out there. Terry Balea, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Tiger Woods, Mel Gibson. There's a huge audience of people out there who have had it up to here with freaking men like you. They don't enjoy you anymore. They don't respect you anymore. They're sick to their stomachs of you. They want you to pack your gear bag and go fucking home. Go home. If you can't contribute to the business, wrestling, because that's what you do, that's what you know, that's what you love. You have a lot of passion for it, brother. 
If you can't contribute something at a higher level than just hogging the limelight from everybody else, so everybody else gets held back and the younger guys don't have a chance to have success in their own right, then go fucking home. Go home. Somebody needs to create and develop something that counters the silliness and the superficialness and the negativity that you just continue to spread to no end. So this is what I'm going to do right here, right now. I'm going to take that bullet I found, Terry, and I'm going to clean the dust and the grime and the rust off of it. I'm going to polish it up. And I'm putting a call out right now to all the Ultimate Warrior fans all over the world, all the other warriors otherwise, to get behind a movement that is positive and inspiring. Men and women who desire to be the best of the potential they have, not the worst. I want those Ultimate Warrior fans and all those other warriors to enlist in this to help me load that bullet up into the chamber and I will shoulder the weapon and I'm going to pull the trigger I'll pull that trigger this Terry is how karma is coming 